everyone. Welcome to Keeping It Real with Janine, your guide to living an authentic, healthy life. I'm Janine Strong, your podcast host, mostly staying home and still having inspiring and interesting conversations. I hope everyone is staying healthy and most importantly, sane. My conversation today is with John Murphy, and I think it's going to be a very interesting and fun conversation. John Murphy is a business consultant who credits his success in business and life to A Course in Miracles. First learning and studying this practice in 2008, John could, whoa, John quadrupled his business in growth and in prosperity. Today, his goal is to teach others the incredible benefits that the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and that's often referred to as ACIM, in case we use that, an acronym, uh, that the incredible benefits that the lessons of A Course in Miracles have to offer us, not only in business, but in our daily lives and interactions with those around us. He's also the author of many books, and I'll let him describe those to you. His current book is Miracle-Minded Manager, a modern-day parable about how to apply A Course in Miracles in business. So, John, how are you in this time of, or shall I say, interesting time? <laughs> yeah, I refer to it as a global timeout. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like in sports, when the coach calls timeout, we need to rethink our, our strategy here a little bit and uh, maybe reboot or reset. And I, I think we're getting a global timeout right now to, uh, to rethink a lot of things, uh, you know, to heal the planet. Mm -hmm. And to heal our minds, mm -hmm. it's what, you know, what a great time for people to just slow down and reflect and uh, reboot, so to speak. Yes, I couldn't agree more. I read an article um, the other day about how many areas where the air pollution was really high, um, rivers and lakes are really polluted. They're like, everything's clearing up. <laughs> Oh, no question. Yeah, it's fantastic. The waterways in Venice are clear for the first time in decades. You can see the Himalayas from India, which which they haven't seen in 30 years. Wow. You know, the, uh, the smog is lifting in California. It's The Great Lakes are, are, are just, they are seeing shipwrecks from satellites that they haven't, haven't seen in, <laughs> ever. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there yeah. definitely is a silver lining to this, and especially if we if we take the mindset of something positive happening from this, you know, I've been telling people that I, I meet and talk to over the phone, you know, we have to, we have to come from a perspective of common sense rather than fear. If we yeah. want to get the well, most out of this. Oh, no question about it. You, you mentioned that you read an article. That's one thing I've been doing very, I've been very busy with just the last, I think I've probably written 10 articles in the last 10 days for different publications on just how to find the silver linings in a situation like this. And, and rather than grieve and be negative and cynical and look for someone to blame, let go of all that and look for the blessings, look for the silver linings. You, you know, um, I happen to think that, that we needed something like this to, to wake up, so to speak, right. and to right. let, let go of some of our negativity and, and grief and finger pointing. So, yeah, let's do that. Well, I've always felt that, and my husband and I have talked about this a lot over the years, that it's going to take something pretty drastic in order to create change on this planet. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what often happens is, you know, you get a wake up call through some form of suffering. Mm -hmm. It hurts. Mm -hmm. It hurts. But if you learn a lesson, you'll never forget. True. And, uh, you know, when you stop, think about how many people complain about, I don't have enough time to do this or that. I don't have enough time to, to you know, to be with my kids or, or uh, you know, meditate or exercise or do whatever it is they want to do. Well, you've got plenty of time now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, are you meditating? Are you exercising? Are you interacting with your kids? Or are you just watching the news and complaining? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. So in 2008, you you came in contact with the Course in Miracles, but in your youth, were you interested in this sort of thing? How did you grow up? What, give me a little background for our listeners sure. so they know kind of who you are. 
Yeah, I kid about this in some of my talks, Janine, but I was born on Friday the 13th. My last name is Murphy, as in Murphy's Law. If anything can go <laughs> wrong, it will. And I had two near-death experiences by the age of three. Wow. How does... So, okay, <laughs> stop there for a minute. How does one have two near-death experiences by the age of three? Oh, yeah. Good question. Well, one of them was I was bouncing on a bed um, and I went right through the the screen into the uh, sec, you know two story building oh. house and you know landed in the front yard. Unfortunately, I didn't break my neck, but you know, I got rushed to the hospital and survived, so to speak. And then the other the other one was I I decided I I needed to have some aspirin because I had a cold, so I uh, climbed out of my crib <laughs> and uh, climbed. I was quite the climber, uh, you know. <laughs> climbed up, got myself a bottle of aspirin, and ate the whole thing. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, and then my mother, I, I didn't feel well. So I, my, my mother said, what is that all over your face? You know, this white powder. <laughs> and I said, uh, the, the way she tells the story, she thought I was saying napkin, you know, <laughs> napkin, something like that. And so she, you know, she checked it out. She's like, oh, my God, you know, I <laughs> raced, raced me to the hospital, pumped my stomach, you know, kept me alive. And uh, so all of that by the age of three. And then yeah, countless visits to the hospital through my teen years. And, you know, I, I went to church every Sunday growing up, uh, reciting a mantra, uh, I'm not worthy. Yeah, brother. You know, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. So I really had this programming, Janine, I think, mm -hmm. in my mind that I'm unlucky. I'm born on Friday the 13th. If anything can go wrong, it will. I keep hurting myself. And I'm just not worthy. So. I was my own worst enemy growing up. In a oh, way. John, I think we all are. Yeah. yeah. You know, that self-fulfilling prophecy, the, you know, the, uh, the expectancy theories that if you expect something's going to go wrong, it probably will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And may I say, you must have been a handful for your mother. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm one of seven. So I oh, was, my God. <laughs> so, yeah. She, uh, yeah, but I think I... I prepped her for the, the other four. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can't even imagine having seven kids. Oh, my God. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, so how, all right. So you've been brought up really in kind of a, a negative headspace um, about yourself and life and uh, what your abilities are. How, how did you start to move out of that? Because you obviously have a very positive, upbeat attitude now? Oh, I yeah, of course, because I had to let go of a whole lot of things, let go of all that negativity, let go of grief, let go of, you know, cynicism and doubt. And, um, but I was real curious growing up, you know, and I, I, I grew up in the Catholic faith. So I, you know, I, I studied Jesus and I learned a lot about uh, his teachings. But mm -hmm. I was also intuitively and you and i've talked in the, before about intuition and, mm -hmm. and how intuitive you are I, my gut so to speak and my sixth sense told me there's a whole lot of things that i disagree with that priests are telling us and things like that i just don't, doesn't make any sense for me to fear god for example why should i be afraid of god yeah <laughs> i never i never got that i grew yeah. uh, i was lutheran i grew up lutheran but i never understood this this whole fear thing. Uh, I, if, uh, if this is supposed to be a loving, if God's supposed to be a loving being, energy, whatever, why why are we supposed to fear? Right. It never right. made sense to me either. And if I follow certain rules, I'll get into heaven. And if I don't, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to burn in hell. So I, 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 you know, I started to look into other teachings that I found myself fascinated with the Tao Te Ching and mm. the teachings. Lao Tzu and, I, and the Buddha. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I spent my 50th birthday with the Dalai Lama, which was a really cool experience. Nice. Yes, yes. I, yeah. I've heard him speak. And when I lived in Portland, I, I got a chance to listen to him and be in a small room with him. I still, in fact, I still have a scarf that he gave me. He hands out scarves and it's over my, I have a beautifully carved Buddha that it's, it's like about three feet tall. It sits on a table and I have the scarf hanging over it still. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah, I have a beautiful original painting of the Buddha in my living room here in Palm Beach mm -hmm. that I 
that over in Hong Kong. It's, it's just it's just stunning to look at. It's a beautiful painting. Ooh. And uh, so, but you know, I, I, I so I, I, I learned. One of the most important lessons I learned, Janine, is that there's a big difference between religion and spirituality. And I describe oh, this in the book, Miracle Minded Manager, and, and I, I describe it in this way. Religion is when we worship someone else who had a deeply spiritual experience. And spirituality is when we have that experience ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and it's lacking the dogma also. Yeah, precisely. And so then I listened to, you know, teachings from the Buddha and from Jesus who said, you know, even the least among you can do far greater than I. And, you know, the Buddha said, my teachings are like a finger pointing to the moon. Don't confuse the finger with the moon. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't idolize me. Mm -hmm. You can do the same as I have. You can awaken. You can let go of all of the noise you've got going on and the you know the buddhists call it monkey chatter in your brain mm-hmm, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can delete all of that negativity and all that programming in your mind and awaken to the most beautiful experience of love and appreciation and gratitude on this planet in any situation whether there's a virus floating around or not you can you can you can you can do that. So I became much more interested in that spiritual experience, mm-hmm. having it myself, rather than going to a temple or a church or a you know a, a, a special place to worship somebody else who had that experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I from my perspective, if you're going to go to a special place, go out in the woods somewhere and sit. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I go and sit down on the beach and just, you know, and listen to the waves, which are very meditative mm. sounds. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I I spent half the year in Michigan, my home, my home state. Oh, where? And, uh, Grand Rapids is where ah, I was born. In. Okay. I lived in Traverse City for oh, 10 years look- and my family lived, my, actually my sister and my brother-in-law still live there. Okay. <clears> yeah. <throat> I, well, I just, I, I love Michigan. And so, yeah, just walk walk the beaches of the Great Lakes mm-hmm. or walk the forests. Just, yeah, just go out and commune with nature. I mean, I, I can't think of a better place to be spiritual, so to speak, mm-hmm. than than in nature. So, John, what did you do to, so for a lot of people, they'll say, well, this is great. You know, I love the idea. I want to change. But how, how did you make the shift? Yeah, well, I'd start by saying, listen. Listen mm-hmm. to your higher self. Listen, th- and you do that through your intuition. Mm-hmm. So rather than dismissing these images that come to mind, these ideas, you know, listen, just listen, because we're in a field of energy. And of course, in Miracles describes that field as love. Love is an energy. It's, it, it's, it's where we came from, mm-hmm. source energy. You mm-hmm. could call it God if you like. But it's, a, it's, it's where we came from. We can tap into it any time we want, and it's where we return. So when we live in love, by the way, A Course in Miracles teaches that love, that love that I just described, capital L love, is very different than what the ego thinks of as love. The ego thinks of love as something we fall in and out of, mm-hmm. or it's mm-hmm. uh, attached to uh, uh, an external thing. I love my car. I love my wife. I love my children. I'm attached to something externally. The problem with that, and, and, and this is a Buddhist principle called detachment. When we attach to anything temporary, we live in perpetual fear of losing it. Mm-hmm. And so we don't even realize we're living in fear, but we are. We're living in subconscious fear of losing anything external that we've attached to. So the whole idea of detachment is loving it, appreciating it valuing it, being thankful for it, but not attaching our happiness to it. And that's very freeing. So when we can learn to let, I like to say, let go to let flow, Mm -hmm. when we can let go of these, the idea, okay, of illness and the idea of stress, stress is an idea. It comes from the mind. It doesn't come from the coronavirus. It doesn't come from the boss. It doesn't come from the traffic jam that you're sitting in. It doesn't come from anything external. You just think it does because you're looking for someone to blame. It can't be me. Right. Well, and also if, 
if it if it wasn't something fr- coming from your mind, everybody would have it, right? So, I mean, there are some people in the same situation who are not stressed, who are in the flow, who are who are keeping calm and others who are stressed. So if we're not all experiencing it the same, then it's got to be coming from us. Exactly. And, and stress comes from a projection of the mind. You know, you talked earlier uh, when we were chatting about uh, the four agreements and one of them is, you know, making assumptions. Uh, stress comes from an assumption that something's going to go wrong. It's what happens when we're not present. We're not in the eternal now. We're not here and now. We are projecting that, uh uh-oh, I'm going to screw up. I'm going to hurt myself. Something's going to go wrong. I'm going to get sick. Oh, no, what happens if, you know, this happens or that happens? So when the mind is projecting an an assumption and that assumption is negative, of course, it triggers stress hormones in our body. You know, all of a sudden we're, you know, the the adrenaline's kicking in and, you know, the Mm -hmm. cortisol stress hormones are kicking in. And now the body is telling us we have proof that, yep, that's, that's stressful that that's scary that's that's dangerous that's bad so the body is giving us proof that the mind is right but the mind isn't present so it's a it's a it's a game it's a mind game mm-hmm. so you know of course in miracles helps us correct that in fact a miracle is described in a course in miracles as a shift in perception or a correction of the mind it's a correction mm-hmm. so we, all of a sudden we realize that all of these things that have been weighing us down are illusions they're, you know, they're not real. And of course, the miracles teach us that anything real cannot be threatened. Mm. Uh, anything unreal, you know, anything unreal doesn't exist. Herein lies the peace of God. So we, we, we learn to differentiate real from unreal. And of course, the miracles describes real as anything that's permanent. It's a, that's eternal. And mm-hmm. when we stop and start looking around at things, we're like, well, that's temporary, and that's temporary, and that's temporary. Even our bodies are temporary. We're going to lose our bodies one of these days. Mm-hmm. But the but the soul is eternal. You know, yeah. our spirit's eternal. So we, you know, we we manifest a body. We we live a a purpose. Hopefully, we know what that purpose is. <laughs> you know, we have a a great time. You know, with with passion and purpose in our lives, and and you know, and then we we go back to where we came from, that field of love. Mm-hmm. So it's a major shift in perception is what I learned from A Course in Miracles. And by the way, you know, I started my practice in 1988, so 32 years ago. And for the, you know, I started it just like anyone else uh, with fear. You know, I was afraid to screw up. I was afraid to go broke. I was, you know, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. So fear motivated me, mm-hmm. so to speak. But there's a big difference, too, between motivation and inspiration. You know, motivation typically comes from something like fear or incentive, you know, the carrot or the stick. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but inspiration is is coming from our, our spirit. That's what in spirit means. Inspiration means in spirit. And in spirit means we're really connected with our, our calling in life, our reason for being here. And when we know what that is and we align with that, with that mission, with that purpose, we can't help but feel passion and, and inspiration. It's, it's what we're supposed to be doing. And I, I always say to people, if you're not sure what your purpose in life is, think of your important gifts, the gifts you've been given. And giving those gifts away is why you're here. Uh, we've I all like been that. Blessed, yeah, we've all been blessed with gifts and giving them away is why you're here giving them a way to make the world a better place. I should clarify. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite mission statements uh, is quote Walt Disney. It's just as an illustration. Walt Disney's mission uh, statement was to use my imagination. That's his gift. Mm -hmm. To use my imagination to bring happiness to millions. (laughs) Stop and think about that for a minute, Janine. To use my gift to make the world a better place. And there's no question Walt Disney followed his purpose with passion and inspiration and overcame all kinds of odds mm-hmm. and wow look, you know look what the disney organization has is offered people around the world today yeah so, it really is incredible yeah so i had an intuition uh, you know and that's why i said we have to listen we have to listen to that higher self it communicates to us through our intuition and through our dreams and there was just this instinct almost that i had that i needed to be a teacher I can't believe I, I'm a writer because I was never that good of a writer in school. But <laughs> you, you obviously weren't inspired then. 
<laughs> no, no. And my mother was an English teacher, so she had helped me immensely <laughs> with all kinds of corrections. And I thought, well, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. But you know, now I've just I've got twenty books published and I don't know dozens and dozens of articles. So um, apparently, I know what I'm. I know how to write something. <laughs> but uh, you know, that was just an evolution um, because when I started to go into consulting, you know, people said, "Well, you got to write a book." You know, you, no one's ever going to take you seriously if you don't write a book. <laughs> so, well, I read a book about how to write a book, and <laughs> you know, and then that led to another one and another one and another one, and and uh, all of a sudden I was like, well, I kind of like this process, you know, and um, and then it just it kept it kept going. But when I found out about a course in miracles, it was because I was I was a self help junkie too, uh, Jenny, and I was always listening to. Uh, you know, inspirational teachers mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. leaders and things like that. And I kept running across this A Course in Miracles, you know. I'd hear, you know, Eckhart Tolle re reference it and, and, and Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson and, and Dr. Mm -hmm. David Hawkins mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Wayne Dyer, you know, and they're all like, and so I was like, well, I wonder what that is. What's mm -hmm. A Course in Miracles? So it's interesting because I came back from a road trip uh, one time and there in my stack of mail was an invitation to take a course in miracles. <laughs> Synchronicity. Oh, okay. All right, Synchronicity. I didn't find it. It found me. Mm -hmm. So this was, it goes back to listening. You know, I could have dismissed it, thrown it in the trash. And right. I don't have time for that. And, uh, but no, it was, I, I, you have to pay attention mm -hmm. to what you pay attention to. Mm -hmm. you Absolutely. To attention who you pay attention to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you so get, I get so mad at myself when I get, you know, when I get these little inspirations or ideas and I ignore it. And then, you know, I mean, just as, as little as, uh, you should take your umbrella and I'm like, eh, it's nice out. I won't take it. <laughs> and then I'm out running around and it's pouring rain. And I'm like, oh, I should have listened. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so once we learn to tap into that field, that energy field, and we start to realize that we're all connected mm -hmm. and we can communicate with one another without words mm -hmm. and we can communicate with our higher self, you know, without words mm -hmm. and get guidance, mm -hmm. you know, and these synchronicities just start showing up. These, you know, cosmic coincidences, whatever you want to call them, sacred, you know, coincidences just start appearing all over the place. Mm -hmm. and, I find the more that I start listening and acting on it, that's when it just, uh, it just, uh, the, the synchronicities, the, 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 the information, it, it was just, it was constant. Um, it was almost yeah. like, I, I mean, I like to say I have a team that's team Janine that looks after, uh, they really look after me. Um, I was just in Costa Rica and I did some pretty stupid things and I was like, Oh, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking care of me because um, I was driving around by myself. But, um, you know, it, it's it's almost like I mean, it's my understanding that that, you know, they can't interfere. Um, you have to ask. And and like they're just chomping at the bit to help because they're on the other side. You're here. You've agreed to come here and incarnate and they've stayed on the other side. And they're you know, they're part of their job is to help you. I, I've just found that, you know, once I really started paying attention, um, it, they, I, I can't believe how much help I get. I, it, it's, oh, it, yeah. it, it, it amazes me sometimes. I'm just so grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, same. So I, you know, I enrolled immediately. In course in so Miracles. tell us a little bit about what really, what is a course in miracles? Cause I know I've known about it for a long, long time. I've, I've had lots of friends who swear by it that, you know, it's changed their life. For some reason, I don't know why I've never, I've never had the inspiration to, you know, to pick it up. But I, I know many people that, um, you know, that it's changed their life for the better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's kind of like listening to a song. Everything is energy and everything is vibrational. So if you listen to a song and you like it, it's because its vibration is in harmony and sync with your vibration. You know, mm -hmm. that's law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Like acts like, mm -hmm. you know, or you listen to a song you don't like. It's like, ah, it doesn't work for me. It's the same thing with a book. Every uh, Books are vibrational. And we're all vibrational. So you get right. along with some people and not so great with other people. It's all vibrational. So for me, A Course in Miracles was a match. And for you, it 
Probably not, at least at this time. Um, but another one of the lines I love from A Course in Miracles right at the beginning is that uh, this it, it's a channeling of Jesus. It's This is A Course in Miracles. It's a required course. Only the time that you take it is voluntary. <laughs> so I, <laughs> well, all right, I guess I better get on with this. If I have to take it sooner or later, I'll just... But it was a match for me, and I was, uh, you know, again, like I said, I'd learned about it through a number of people I really had a lot of respect for. It's so. What is it? It's it's a channeling that Dr. Helen Shuckman did in the '70s. She's a medical psychologist at Columbia University, mm -hmm. a Jewish agnostic scientist. So all people <laughs> could channel Jesus, <laughs> you know. Wow. She, yeah. So, and, and and of course, it freaked her out at first too, because she's hearing this this, this voice c commanding her to take notes, and and this is a course in miracles, and she's like, what? <laughs> so she shared this with one of her colleagues, Dr. Bill Thetford, and and Bill, Bill Thetford said, well, Helen, write it down. I'll help. You. I'll help you sort through it. You know, rather than resist it, mm -hmm. you know, let go, let flow. Right. So Helen, and so seven years later. I mean, that's how long it took to, to channel this this whole course and get it, you know, edited and, and prepped. Mm -hmm. And it was then published by the Foundation for Inner Peace. But it's believed by scholars all over the world and practitioners to be a channeling of Jesus because of the, the profound teachings and words and even references used in the course. So uh, it's three parts. There's a, a textbook, which is really deep and profound, and I recommend to, to beginners don't don't start with that because you'll never finish it. <laughs> the second part is what's called the workbook, and it's one lesson per day for 365 days. It's a one-year course, and it is a commitment. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a commitment. You got to commit typically 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, or a per your short periods throughout the day to each mantra, each lesson. Okay. Um, and then the third part's the teacher's manual. So, um. These are one-liners. The workbook mantras are one-liners. And so you start to look around you at the world and you start to deprogram a lot of the nonsense that you have in your mind and deprogram a lot of the ego thinking, the fear-based dualistic ego, which the ego is the root cause of, of shame, guilt, grief, lust, jealousy, pride, anger, fear, anxiety, doubt. It is the root cause to all of those feelings. So wow, you, so why do we have an ego then? I mean, that human, sounds pretty crappy. <laughs> I know, but it's human nature. The ego is also human nature. It's, it's, it's the dualistic programming. We think of each other as separate. We're all separate. We're all individual. We're all independent. Some people are more special than others. That's how the ego thinks. Mm -hmm. Right, wrong, good, bad, win, lose, us, them, Republican, Democrat, uh, night, day. Everything is dualistic. And that's human nature. So that's how we, 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 we step into the world and we see everything in that dualistic way. And it's we don't even realize uh, uh, that it's it's uh, it's a root cause to a massive amount of suffering. So any time we're feeling ashamed or guilt or grief or anger or pride, us and them, my school, your school, any time we're in that uh, feeling those things, we are in the ego box, the ego mindset, the ego paradigm, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And no matter how hard we try to solve problems inside that box, they keep coming back because it it's the box that's the problem. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, why solve problems inside a box when it's the actual box that's the problem? It's the it's the thought system, the ego thought system. So Miracle Mind Managers teaches us how to step out of that thought system and into an entirely different paradigm, an entirely different belief system. It's it, it's faith rather than fear. Mm -hmm. And you can't have true faith and fear at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. So you're either afraid because you don't have true faith or if you have true faith, you're not afraid of anything. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a shift. It's a paradigm shift from one box to an entirely different uh, way of thinking. That's what A Course in Miracles teaches us. And so when I made that shift, you know, um, 10 years ago, basically, my everything in my world changed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, you said earlier in the introduction, my business quadrupled in, in revenues in one year. So, oh it, my. you know, yeah. It just was mind blowing. 
I, I, I start, I, I not only return to writing, but you know, I think I've written probably eight or 10 books in the last eight or 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. In fact, That's a yeah, lot. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, I even channeled a book. I, I was telling you this, uh, before the show, uh, a, a book beyond doubt, four steps to inner peace. Mm-hmm. I was, I had actually stopped writing for nine years cause I was, I was halfway through a book when my father got deathly ill and ended up passing and I just lost interest and never went back to it. So for nine years, I was doing my consulting and my speaking engagements and this and that and teaching. And I was over in Lyon, France teaching um, for a while. And I got up on a Saturday morning and uh, there was a presence in my room. Kind of reminds me of Dr. Helen Shuckman's experience. Mm, mm -hmm. And this presence commanded me to start writing. And I and I remember saying, no, I, I don't know who you are, why, what you're <laughs> trying to do. I don't I don't want to write. I don't have anything to write about. I don't want to start something I can't finish. I already did that. I'm super, super busy right now and blah, blah, blah. And a long story short, I opened my laptop and started writing. I wrote all weekend and it went on to become the 2010 best inspirational book of the year in, in out of Toronto, Canada, all books review. Wow. So it was an award winning book about about the four steps to inner peace, which are let be, let go, let see, and let flow. So let be means be present, be here, be now, okay. you know, check your assumptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, let go is let go of all the baggage you're carrying around, the emotional baggage, the the fear, the doubt, the, you know, the finger pointing, the blame. Let go of ego. Mm-hmm. Let go of ego. And when you let go of ego, the third step, let see, is you see everything different. Mm-hmm. That person that used to annoy you, now you have compassion for that person. That thing that used to scare you, now you see right through it. Mm-hmm. And you recognize that there's nothing to be afraid of. And then when you see differently, the fourth step, let, let, let flow, is where you just live in beautiful harmony with that capital L love that, that gives us all life. You, 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 live in, you live in the Tao, you know, the great flow of life, the great current. Mm-hmm. You, you you experience uh, effortless manifestation. Wu Wei is how they say it in mm-hmm, China. Mm-hmm. Effortless manifestation. You you don't have to try real hard. You don't have to work eighty hours a week. You know you don't, you don't right, have to yeah. believe a lot of these paradigms we grew up with. You just allow beautiful things to flow into your life, and you you live in gratitude and appreciation and. Um, it's a completely different way to, to, to experience life. And, and so that's what A Course in Miracles has done for me. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, it's a one-year course, I think, Janine, I probably repeated it now four or five times in four or five years. So. Mm-hmm. Well, you probably get something different out of it each time. Oh, yeah. And just little refreshers. And mm-hmm. the thing is, you don't even have to buy the book these days. Every single lesson's on YouTube. <laughs> There's some wonderful YouTube instructors that you know do a little daily teachings on whatever the daily lesson is. Uh Uh-huh. So that's a good, so somebody who wants to, you know, maybe they don't want to get the manual and all that, but they just want a little taste of what it's about. That might be a good way for them to, to be introduced to it. Yeah, sure. In fact, that's what I have Jack McDonald and his wife, the the characters in the book, Mm -hmm. Miracle Mind Manager do when they first learn about it, they Google it, you know, Mm -hmm. It or whatever. It's like, yeah, let's check this out, and 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 so they start. All of a sudden, they they find it. No, oh, it's 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 all over the place, you know. So, you know, you can you can definitely access it easily and without you know paying for it. Even you, YouTube's just click on YouTube and watch it, and see if see if the vibe is right for you. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's it's not going to be. Uh, let me just say this: you have to really desire awakening. You you know what the Buddhists call awakening, the Hindus call it enlightenment, the uh, the Christians call it salvation. It's all the same thing. You have to really want to wake up, and 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 let go of drama and duality and who's right and who's wrong and and, and feeding on the news, you know, the newscasts and the media uh, negativity. You have to just you have to get to a point where it's like you know what I'm I'm done with that. Mm-hmm. I. No, I don't want to live my life in fear. I don't want to live my life in that kind of conflict. I, I want inner peace. And because it teaches inner peace. And so, if you, you know, if you're, I think what you're saying right now, John, is really, really important, um, especially for where we're at right now with the virus. 
you know, I think this is really important because one of the things that I was thinking as you were talking is I know people who want to be there. They feel like their life is so crappy and, and there's so much negativity in their life. I don't, you know, they don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to change that. They don't know how to change their attitude, their assumptions, their thinking. And maybe, uh, you know, for them, maybe A Course in Miracles just might be the answer. Yeah, it's it's certainly a, a tool that mm -hmm. can help. And here's the thing, Janine. A lot of people don't like their jobs, but they won't quit. Right. A lot of right. people are in a lot. A lot of people are in a lousy relationship, but they won't leave it. Mm -hmm. So they'd rather just put up with the misery and the drama, and plow their way through it, you know, rather than surrender. Because a lot of people, the ego thinks of surrender as weakness. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when we surrender the ego itself. And that's just when we look to the skies and we just say, okay, I give up. I don't know what to do. I, you know, I'm in a miserable situation here. Or, and that's why it takes a great deal of suffering sometimes in order for people to wake up. Mm -hmm. They have to get fired from that job. They have to get divorced from that, <laughs> that loveless marriage or whatever. They have to, and it's shocking. And it's abrupt a lot of times because in many cases, we're just not proactive enough to take the initiative and say, I quit, or I, I'm, I'm leaving. I, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I'm done. So we have to get to that point. You know, on David Hawkins' map of consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, where he's, I loved his work. And, you know, he was a, a, a total believer in A Course in Miracles. And, um, but the map of consciousness, I love that because what he did, if, if you're familiar with it, using mm -hmm. applied kinesiology, he actually had a logarithmic scale of the different energy frequencies of quite a few different feelings, the lowest being shame. Anybody feeling shame is asking for more shame, you know, with law of attraction. Shame mm -hmm. attracts shame, misery loves company. After shame is guilt. So people who feel guilty are just asking for more to feel guilty about. And there's apathy and hopelessness and despair. And then there's um, grief and all the mm -hmm. grievances and the complaints and the negativity. And then there's uh, lust and, and, and attachment, and and uh, and then there's uh, fear. Mm -hmm. You know, there's fear and anxiety, and it goes all the way up. And you get up after you get to anger, and then pride. And after pride is courage, and it's courage where you shift away from the ego energies into the love, capital L love energies. And this is David Hawkins' map of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so. My takeaway on that is that it takes courage to let go, it takes mm -hmm. courage to surrender the ego, to say, all right, enough. I'm not going to live this way anymore. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in conflict. I'm not going to live in this uh, drama, you know, in all this negative drama. I I'm done with it. And so when we s surrender that ego and we, st and, 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 you know, the pride, pride gets in our way. Mm hmm. And now we then all of a sudden we get into the love energies of, of acceptance and tolerance and compassion. You know, the Buddha talks uh, talked about compassion. The Dalai Lama talks about compassion and um, and joy, pure joy and bliss. We get into these energies where every day is just blissful. It's we, we wake up enthusiastic, you know, eager, eager mm -hmm. for whatever is to come. We're excited about it. Not a doubt in the world. And then the highest energies are up in the, into the enlightenment, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the, the, the true unconditional love and the enlightenment. And uh, I, so I love that that scale and that map of consciousness that David Hawkins put together, because it, it's it taught me that whenever if I'm ever feeling any kind of grief or anger or you know jealousy or pride, it's it's, it's because I've I've I'm allowing the ego to guide my thinking. And I'm, and I'm going to delete that. And instead, I'm going to embrace, you know, the beauty that surrounds us every day, all the time. It's always here. It's always available to us. We just have to tap it. You know, we just have to allow it. Mm -hmm. And I think of that like opening the valve on a faucet. You know, the, the water's there. It wants to flow. But if we go through life with a closed mind and a closed heart, you know, we don't open up those 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 chakras and those valves, you know, those mm -hmm. energy centers that we have, we 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 don't experience the the flow, and the grace, and the generosity, and the abundance, and the prosperity, and all the things that we say we want. 
So yeah, A Course in Miracles is, is it's a letting go, it's a deleting of ego thinking, and it's a transformational shift to an entirely different perspective. Mm-hmm. And it's, so it's helped me in business, it's helped me in my relationships, it's, just, it's helped me in so many different ways. You know, John, it a thought just came to me that I wonder how much of the difficulty in attaining this is our... I think drama's an addiction, actually. And, you know, we're so many people are addicted to drama and, and needing drama in their lives to to feel alive, to feel energized. Or, you know, for some people, it's like all they, that's the way they were brought up. That's all they know. Um, and the need to yeah. let go of drama. Oh, yeah. Well, in the years, I, I, I kid about this sometimes, but it's true. The problem with peace is it's boring, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we're getting a good dose of it right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, you know, we're isolated at home. We're, you know, the, the restaurants are shut down. The pubs are shut down. You can't go to, you know, a church. You can't go to anywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, we're at home. And uh, so it's it's a lesson in peace. It's a lesson in patience. But the truth is, yeah, the ego is bored with peace. Mm-hmm. And as long as we're attached to the ego, and again, it's human nature, we need the television on. We need something. We need something because we can't just sit for very long and reflect and, and you know, meditate. And, uh, you know, having said that, who wants to sit and meditate all day long? I, so I certainly don't. But I, but you can take meditation. And I know you've had guests before talk about walking meditations, you know. Mm-hmm eating meditations, nature meditations, you know, you can take a meditative mindset anywhere you go. Right. And, uh, you know, meditate on an airplane, you know, I meditate on an elevator, meditate, you know, I I do little short meditations before I give up, get up to give a keynote speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) No, I, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's a way to center yourself, to become present. Um, It's a way to quiet monkey mind. I find that those are the times that um, good ideas come to me too. They just kind of pop into my head. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's so one of the things I love to do is, I, you know, I, I, my friends kid me because I, I, you know, I've got televisions here in my my home, but I I haven't turned them on in months. I don't, you know, uh, I I have them for guests when they come or my kids or something like that. But uh, I, I I don't watch television, mm-hmm. and I'd rather just, you know, I go down and sit on the beach and 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 uh, reflect. And that's where I get a lot of my writing ideas. It's where I get um, ideas for uh, different business ventures that I'm involved in, speaking, you know, speaking topics, things like that. And uh, it's truly peaceful. And and it's it's but again, peace is a vibration. It's mm-hmm. a vibe, and it's not a vibe the ego appreciates. The, you know, the ego is. It's constantly in search of more. Mm. You know, it's it's the ego's mantra: "Seek and ye shall not find." <laughs> you know, as soon as you get that degree, you need another degree. As soon as you get that, you know four thousand square house foot house, you need a, an eight thousand square foot mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. As soon as you get that job title, you need the next. It's just it's constantly, perpetually, taking you away from peace. And gratitude, the ego does not understand gratitude. Okay, it's it doesn't understand true appreciation because it's constantly got to have more. Mm-hmm. So you, know, you can use that. You know, David Hawkins referred to the ego as a tool. You can use the tool to discern, make choices, one thing versus another. Um, you know, right and wrong, and this and that. But uh, it's it's a tool. So don't blame the tool if you hit your, you, you don't blame the ha- hammer, so to speak, if you hit yourself in the thumb. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the hammer's fault. So, you know, always look at the user of the tool. So use and recognize that you're not the ego. See, a lot of people don't realize that. Your the ego is not who you truly are. It's a, it's a shadow, so to speak. It's a, it's an illusion. Um, it's an idea. It's an, it's an image in your mind. You know how you look and how you sound and and what you do for a living and it's it's loaded with drama of course the the ego feeds on drama mm-hmm. when you recognize that you're you know you're beyond all of that in terms of spirit mm-hmm. and that you have nothing to fear 
And that when you do get afraid, all you're doing is asking for more to be afraid of. That's law of attraction again. Your fear loves company, just like misery loves company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you let go of all of that, which a lot of people don't believe they can. Right, right. It just changes everything in life. Mm -hmm. So, John, okay, a lot of people are, I mean, there are people who uh, work from home because that's voluntary. That's what they want to do. but in this time period, there are many, many people who are being forced to work from home. How could these principles help them to stay sane, um, <laughs> stay in the flow, stay, you know, upbeat and positive? And I mean, I, I can't even imagine, you know, I live on a homestead. I'm out every day in the garden, taking care of the chickens, riding my bike, taking my dog for a walk. You know, my life really hasn't changed all that much. I can't even imagine what it would be like to live like in an apartment or a condo in the city. And wow, I just really feel for people who are kind of stuck in a small space and, you know, feeling like they don't have any uh, freedom. Yeah. Well, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is, because it's something I do and it's it's changed my life dramatically over the years, is read a good book mm -hmm. because your your mind you, when you read a good book doesn't matter where you're sitting your mind is taking you to another place mm -hmm. you know so uh, whether you're sitting on an airplane you're sitting in a little apartment in New York you're you're you know you're sitting on a train whatever uh, this is the perfect time right now Janine to read a book but now not just any book I mean sure you could read some drama that's cool. Uh, you know, it's entertainment, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what changed my life in such dramatic ways was reading productive books versus just, I, I described the difference between activity and productivity this way. Activity okay. is just busy work. It's mm. just reading, reading anything. Productivity is taking you closer to where you want to go. It's moving you in a specific direction. So rather than just being busy, you're busy doing something valuable mm -hmm. and important to you. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, you could pick a book that's going to help you grow and emerge as the soul that you are. You know, you mentioned gardening. I think gardening is a wonderful metaphor for life because I, I did a little video yesterday on essence and um, emergence. Emergence is one of the chapters in, in the book, Miracle Minded Manager. Mm -hmm. Essence is who we're meant to be. It's who we are spiritually. Essence is like, you know, an acorn is, its essence is to become a, an oak tree. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a seed is, its essence is to grow into a hibiscus plant or whatever. Mm -hmm. And emergence is that process. So we are all emerging both individually as well as culturally. We're evolving, we're emerging, we're, we're, we're becoming what we're supposed to be becoming. That's thy will be done, not my will. So mm -hmm. sometimes thy will isn't aligned with my will. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm not getting what, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm getting what I'm supposed to get. And I think right now, that's this is the perfect example of that. We're getting thy will for a reason. And it's disrupting my will quite a bit. It's really disrupting that ego. But, you know, so you're stuck in a, uh, an apartment or whatever, find something enlightening and meaningful to read, something that might change your life. I, I, there's you know, a number of books that I've read over the years that have just completely sort of blown my mind and, and, and helped me emerge. So, John, what are, what are some of the books that you would recommend to people? They're at home and they would like to delve into something to to promote their growth, to help them to change? Um, what kind of books helped you that you would recommend to people? Yeah, well, there, there, there's so many books. I'll list a few that, that really impacted me mm -hmm. um, over the years. And some of, some of these books go back 20 years, but uh, Many Lives, Many Masters, Brian, Dr. Brian Weiss really blew my mind. Uh, Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now and A New Earth really kind of blew my mind, if you will. David Hawkins' work. Power versus Force mm -hmm. and uh, Truth versus Falsehood. Uh, Greg Braden's works, The Divine Matrix, for example. Gary Zukov's The Seed of the Soul, mm -hmm. um, I found uh, intriguing. Uh, Father Richard Rohr, 
uh, the naked now learning to see as mystics see. Uh, Bruce Lipton, the biology of belief, mm -hmm. just really kind of blew my mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, I, I'm in fact I'm in my library right now. There's, there's uh, I could look around the shelves here to pick up pick out a few more, but there's just so many. Um, and one of the things that's interesting, I think it was Zig Ziglar told me this once. We were doing a gig together, and he said uh, he said something like, um, you know, when you look at successful people in life, they all have libraries. <laughs> And it just struck me. It's like, you know, yeah, because there's so much we can learn from reading. Yep. Mm -hmm. As opposed to tuning into, you know, the news. So uh, watching the news might be an activity, but reading something that's really going to help my my health, my well-being, my my prosperity, my growth, my emergence, that's productive. So I, I one one suggestion to your, you know, your your listeners is know the difference between act activity and productivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just saw another book on my shelf that I absolutely love called Proof of Heaven, Dr. Uh, Evan Alexander. Mm -hmm. I met, and uh, it was just, uh, his story is just so incredible. Mm -hmm. That one I don't know. Most, most all the books that you've uh, recommended I've read. My library is actually pretty small right now because I've given away most, <laughs> most of my uh -huh. books and trying to, trying to uh, you know, get rid of stuff and, and clean up and you know, and just not have so many things around. I figure if I've already read them, it's nice to pass them on to somebody who can use it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I do the same thing. I pass on books all the time. But yeah, there's just so there's so many options. And I, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I've written 20 books. I think 17 are still in print. So there's, you know, I've got a variety of things that people could uh, to tap into if, if they want to read my work. Why don't you name, let's see, how about name three of your favorite books that you've written that you think would be most helpful for people right now? Yeah, well, definitely The Miracle-Minded Manager, um, mm -hmm. which is my most recent book, came out last October, um, October of 2019. Okay. Uh, before that, I had a book out called Zentrepreneur. So it's Ooh. really combining Zen and, you know, harmony and peace and balance and inner, you know, inner peace with mm -hmm. action, with entrepreneurship. So Zentrepreneur is a really uh, intriguing book. Um, and then uh, the award-winning Beyond Doubt, Four Steps to Inner Peace. That's the book I channeled uh, beginning over in, in Lyon, France. But uh, the Four Step Beyond Doubt, what a perfect time to read a book like that. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you, you know, uh, people are anxious. People are grieving. People are afraid. They're, they're not, you know, what's going to, you know, when are we going to go back to normal? And the answer is we're not. You know, the normal's changing. <laughs> so, you, you know, know they, this is this is such a time of the unknown. We really don't know how this is all going to unfold, where it's going to go, and what a perfect time to learn to be comfortable and okay with the unknown. Learn to trust the universe. Learn to trust yourself. Learn to be in the flow. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this because I didn't talk about this at all, Janine, but I I was a competitive athlete growing up, and um, and I was particularly interested in football. I went on to play um, at Notre Dame, and and I was a quarterback. And mm -hmm. and the metaphor for life is this: is when a quarterback walks up to the line of scrimmage, and is about to execute a play. Uh, there's a goal. There's a play called. It's part of a strategy. It's part of a game plan. It's something you've been practicing all week. But the truth is, when that ball is snapped. You don't know what's going to happen. In other words, life is uncertain. So, of course, we can set goals in our lives and plan and, and, and come up with a, a life strategy and practice and do all of these things. But when we get up in the morning, the truth is the day is uncertain. We really don't know what's going to happen. So what that means is how do we approach the day and how does a successful quarterback approach the play that is about to be executed. And the answer is you've got fear or faith, two thought systems. Mm -hmm. The fear thought system is not going to work well for you because if you walk up to that line scrimmage afraid, uh, you're you're going to get blitzed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so, and no one's going to follow you. If you walk up to that line of scrimmage confident, which is what is a critical leadership characteristic, mm -hmm. positive, we're going to make the best out of this. We're going to make the best out of this day. Yes, there are a lot of variables, but we're going to we're going to we're going to do this in a positive way. 
that's inspiring leadership right there. So I, you know, whether a person's ever played a, a sport or not, if we approach the day recognizing that we don't have to be afraid, that there's an alternative, and we can approach the day with confidence, with faith, with a belief that things are going to be okay, that's a huge shift in energy. Mm -hmm. And it is measurable energy. And that's why I love the work of like David Hawkins and such is because when we shift from a fear-based energy, which is heavy and dark and gloomy and weighs us down to a light, faith-based, capital love energy flowing, that's when the miracles happen. And one other thing that I think is important, and that's flexibility. Oh, yeah. yeah. And as a quarterback, you have to be flexible. <laughs> <laughs> and in scrap. life, you have to be flexible because the yep. more rigid you are, the, you know, the more fearful and the more you can be flexible and go with the flow and be willing to do things differently than you thought you were going to do or think things differently because things have changed, the easier life will be and the more enjoyable. Oh, absolutely. And I, I also like to use this little example for people, too, that problems and solutions are two sides to the same coin. So inspiring leaders focus on solutions while everybody else focuses on the problem. So take this coronavirus. Are mm -hmm. people focusing on the virus? Oh, my gosh, we have this huge problem. Oh, my gosh, everything's being disrupted. Oh, my gosh, I don't have any work. Oh, my God. They're focusing on the problem. They're just making it worse. When you focus on the solution, the fact that the earth is healing, that we are given an opportunity right now to heal ourselves, to heal our minds, to let go of our grief, to let go of our anger, to let go of our dualistic attitudes and who's right and who's wrong. And we have a chance to let all that go and heal. When we focus on solutions, we're positive and inspiring. When we focus on problems, we're the cynics and we're just, you know, misery loves company. Mm -hmm. So. I really think it's important that we as a population, a global population, start to think in terms of respecting the planet, respecting one another, pulling together as a, as a, a, as a world, <laughs> as a mm -hmm. human race, and not just whose country's doing what, you know, but like, come on, let's wake up, people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think I really want everybody to hear what you just said because I think this is an awesome ending to our conversation. Um, of, oh goodness, I'm having a senior moment all of a sudden. I hate this. What you just <laughs> oh, what you just said. I I can't believe it. I didn't write. I should have written it down. Okay, what did you just say about about problems and solutions? Yes, thank you. Oh, gosh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so funny oh, i every once in a while i i'm like i'm just ready to open my mouth and it just like goes out of my brain thank you yes so problems and solutions what are we focusing on are we focusing on the problem or are we focusing on solutions i think that is super super critical and important yeah yeah and, and the other thing is is that our attention is so important so we have to be very careful of, of what we give our attention to. Mm -hmm. So when you start, that's what mindfulness is really all about. What am I going to attend to with my mind? What am I going to give my attention to? The drama, the fury, the frenzy, the, you know, are the things going wrong in the world? Or the beauty, the, the, the quiet beyond the noise, you know, <laughs> the, the peace beyond the conflict. It's all there. What am I going to attend to? What am I going to give my attention to? Right. And it doesn't mean you're putting your head in the sand and you're not aware of what's going on. It's just making a choice of well, where you want to focus your attention, where you want to focus your energy. Yes. Yes, it is. Yep. It's directing energy because thought is a form of energy and it's measurable. It's directing your thoughts towards solutions, towards everything's going to work out. We're going to learn from this. And if, you, if, you, if you're ever in doubt about, oh my gosh, this is a disaster. What's, you know, what's the, why is this happening? Just stop and ask yourself, what am I supposed to learn from this? Mm -hmm. because, because there's a lesson. There's always a lesson. So what am I supposed to learn from this? What is this supposed to, what is this teaching me? Mm -hmm. And I really believe, I believe we're getting, getting a, a global lesson right now in appreciation and gratitude and and respect for the planet but just even little things you know just gratitude for a hug <laughs> gratitude mm -hmm. for a roll of toilet paper gratitude <laughs> for 
uh, a pub that's open where you can go and sit with your friends and, you know, cheers. Yeah, all the things that we take for granted that yep. we can't do right now or yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think when, when things do open back up, um, maybe we come at it with a, a, a higher level of awareness and appreciation and respect. And, you know, another lesson I think that we're learning is that we don't need nearly as much as we think we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things I teach in business is called lean, lean thinking, lean manufacturing, lean Six Sigma. Lean is about letting go of things that get in the way and we don't need and letting things flow. So it's about improving cash flow, improving inventory flow, and improving supply chain flow. Amazon is a good example of lean. It's just it's it's just flowing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so when we run a business is that way, and then things flow, we start to realize we really don't need nearly what we thought we did. <laughs> we all, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's stuff in the closets you haven't worn in years, you know, and you and you're thinking you need more closet space. I don't think so. Right, and this no. is a good time to do it. You've got time to. You know, pick an area of the house. I've been doing that. I'll just pick a small area and, oh, do I really need this? Do I really need that? Do I really, does this bring me joy? You know, because there's some things that I, like art kinds of things that I don't need, but they bring me joy when I look at them. Yeah. Um. You know. Yeah, letting go of stuff that's just, it's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, downsizing, so to speak. You know, and the other thing about miracles, miracles love vacuums. In other words, like when we get rid of a bunch of stuff and we give away a bunch of things, that creates a, an energetic vacuum, so to speak, a, like a, 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 almost like a vortex. So the, the energy, by giving away, we receive more. Mm -hmm. So the more love we give away, the more love we experience. The more forgiveness we give away, the more we experience personal forgiveness, the more we feel guiltless, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and the, so the more we give away money, the more money we receive. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's another major lesson. And of course, in miracles is that giving and receiving are the same. Nice. So just, yeah, take this opportunity to think about what what could I what could I give away? Maybe there's some clothes in my closet that somebody else could really use much more than I than I need them. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. well, I'll actually, you just gave me an idea because I've been wanting to have a yard sale, and maybe I'll just have a yard giveaway. You yeah, know, there are a lot of people that need things, and just ask people if they want to donate something they can. But if it's something they really need, just take it and enjoy it. Yeah, and if you understand the laws of karma, karma is, you know, what goes around comes around. There's all debts get paid, everything balances out. And so when we give something for free, but it's a value, the karma is not like linear the way the mind thinks a lot. Like I gave you this, so now you owe me back. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. By giving away to somebody who's really in need, we receive from some unexpected place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's that pay it forward thing. All of a sudden something comes our way that we weren't expecting. It's that's how karma works. It's, it's not linear. So it's not like, um, okay, you, you know, I did this for you. Now you owe me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The debt gets paid one way or another, but not necessarily by the one that we gave it to. Right. Right. Yeah. So if somebody says something harsh to us and we hold a grievance, Okay, all we're doing is hurting ourselves by giving away forgiveness. We're letting all that go, and we're we're we're, we're you know we're in a whole different field of energy. Mm -hmm. mm, nice. Well, John, this has really been a fun, inspirational conversation, and I think it's it's so timely. But I think I usually do every two weeks. I think I'm going to put our conversation in between and add it because I think it's so pertinent right now and and it can be so helpful so i'm going to add an extra one in and that will be our conversation oh uh, i feel honored thank you janine oh <laughs> you're very welcome well i just i think this has really been a great conversation i i had a lot of fun i think you know everything that you had to say is is just it's it's right on for for today for what people are going through and um yeah, I'd like to get it out there for people so they can be inspired and maybe make the choice to think differently instead yeah. of be in fear. So many people are in fear and 
It was so funny. I was at the grocery store yesterday and I'm looking at the spices and this guy comes up because he wanted to get something. He goes, I, I said, oh, it's okay. Go ahead. I, and he said, I said, I don't mind. He goes, are you sure? I said, yeah, really, I'm fine. Just, you know, get what you want. And he goes, I can hold my breath if you want. <laughs> and we laughed and I said, no, really, I'm good. I'm, I'm not in fear here. You just do what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy to see people walking around with masks and everything. It's, it's just, yeah. Well, I assume you have a website. Why don't you get some contact information or, or, you know, maybe somebody would like you to speak or be on their podcast or radio show? Sure. Yeah. Well, my body of work is, is at uh, johnjmurphy.org, johnjmurphy.org. And then uh, I'm also on, on social media. Um, it's author John J. Murphy on Facebook. It's John J. Murphy or John Murphy Mystic on LinkedIn. I think I don't know if the John J. Murphy Mystic or John Murphy Mystic, but it's uh, yeah. And those are those are the platforms that I spend most of the time on. I'm growing an audience on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. It's at Sage Leader, but I'm easy to find. So if yeah, if you Googled me or you Googled the book Miracle Minded Manager, it'd pop right up. Okay, great, awesome, and I'll put links on the podcast website um, so people can just click on them if they want it easy <laughs> yeah and i just got closed by saying this janine to, to your audience take this time to read a good book it doesn't have to be one of mine but read mm -hmm. you know and invest in or yourself. listen you can do audible too <laughs> or listen of course of course yeah or listen yeah that's a great idea yeah but invest in yourself take this time to learn a new skill to learn something that could be life changing what mm -hmm. i mean why not why yeah, not? Exactly. And, That's a good question. Why not? <laughs> yeah, and, and break some of the habits that are probably weighing you down. I wrote a book years ago called Habits Die Hard. And, you know, they do die hard, but yeah. you can consciously get up in the morning instead of putting on the TV and mindlessly watching whatever, you could uh, go for a walk. You know, you could read a good book. You could uh, listen to a good book. You could tune into a podcast like this one. You know, <laughs> there's so many things you can do. Well, you know, if you want to start simp in a simple way, and I pay attention to this, we all tend to do exactly the same thing in the morning. Um, you know, when we're putting our pants on, we put the right leg in first or the left or whatever. In our socks, we do the same thing. And I make a point to just switch it all up. So yeah. I'm not always doing the same thing. Yeah. Well, I know you had a guest, uh, Michael, uh, Dr. Michael, on uh, about neuroplasticity and, and mm -hmm. that uh, just changing things up like that. You're changing your your brain chemistry, so to speak, your your, your neurological pathways. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a brain doctor or anything like that, but by just changing habits like that, little things like that, you're you're just it's, you're, it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we all want to keep our brains healthy. We want to keep that neuroplasticity. We want to keep growing new neural pathways and you know, keep our, keep our brain functioning, uh, till we decide to pass. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. What gets fired gets wired. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Well, thank you so much once again, John. I really appreciate it. This has been great. I'm going to check out some of your books now. Uh, thanks Janine. Anytime. I, 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 I love sharing as much as I can with the world. I can tell. Okay, thank you. Take care. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for being here with me. And thank you, John Murphy, for sharing timeless wisdom that is pertinent more than ever now. The podcast website is realtonine.com, where you can listen to or download episodes. Click on links to my guest information and sign up for the podcast bi-weekly blog newsletter. That way you can keep up on new and archived episodes, interesting topics, and healthy recipes. And remember, Janine is J-A-N-E-A-N. -E to subscribe to Keeping It Real with Janine, just go to iTunes or whoever your favorite podcast provider is. And check out my podcast YouTube channel if you're into YouTube. I make video slideshows of all my conversations. Do you know someone who would enjoy my conversation with John Murphy? I'm quite sure you do. Please share the love. We'd all appreciate it. Thanks for listening and 
Take care and be well.